What's going on guys, Tutorial 6 here, back for another fix video, and today we're looking at the Fans Toy Store, and I just kind of wanted to address some of the things that I found uh, messing with this guy a little, that uh, are kind of in need of a little bit of a fix, namely like the squeaky hips, um, but notably that fix will cause this to be more loose than when you were actually able to squeak it. Um, it has pros and cons, I haven't actually seen it affect how he's able to stand at all, um, so, I mean, he still holds positions very well, so I don't, you know, it hasn't really been a, a hindrance to me, and, uh, frankly, if it keeps going and squeaking, eventually that plastic's gonna wear away anyway, and he's gonna end up flopping anyway. So, for this fix, most of it is gonna be screwdriver, and I really like to use this, uh, 80 weight silicon shock oil, um, it's basically for model car, or RC cars, to uh, lubricate the springs and stuff. It works really well. You don't need a lot. Um, I've had it for years and used it on many Transformers, SH Figuarts, and uh, you can see I've barely uh, broke into it at all. So yeah, <laughs> real easy to do most of these fixes. So the first thing I want to address is just how difficult it is to actually move his head here. Um, you can do this a couple different ways. If you're not comfortable with using any of the lubricant on here, you can simply loosen the screw under here like a quarter turn or so. And that will make it easier. It's still going to be tough, but uh, yeah, it will make everything easier. The way I really recommend doing it though, and you take this screw out. Once you get the screw out, you can actually carefully wiggle his face off of this post here. And you can see it's all painted on there. So if this wasn't painted, we wouldn't have a problem. So we can then go ahead and take... Actually, I'm just noticing here. This could also be causing a problem. We got a little bit of mold flashing. It looks like left over on there. So you could probably sand that away and make it easier. But we can just go ahead and take our shock oil here. And put a little drop on here. And then basically... Whoops! Alright, sorry about that, dropped his head on the floor. But basically, after we get that, you can go ahead and put his head on and give it a couple good turns around like that. And you can see just how free that head is moving. And once we're there, done with that, we go ahead and put the screw right back in. And you'll have a nice free head. And just for reference, I put the screw back in. And you can just see, look how easy that is to turn for me now. Not a problem at all. So, very easy fix. So next we'll talk about how to fix the squeaky hips. Uh, he has two screws on each side here. Uh, one on the back and one on the front here. Um, I did take this whole toy apart trying to figure out because I didn't see this front screw at first. And uh, I thought that the sides were actually stuck in the torso. So I took them all the way apart. But it's not. So once again, once you have that off, you can just pull this out. And you can see I put a pretty healthy amount of lubricant on there. You can probably get away with le less. I just didn't want to hear the squeak at all. But, you know, basically lubricate that pole in this hole. And, uh, you know, reattach everything. And there will be that squeak taken care of. Now before I go on to the next part, uh, I know I'm going to get someone asking, can I use WD-40 as opposed to like the silicon shock oil? You probably can. Um, from my experiences, WD-40 has never hurt the plastic. Although I have heard people comment and say that, you know, WD-40 can mess with plastic. I've used it on G1 toys that are still kicking around. Um, so I don't think it's really a problem. But I can tell you that the silicon shock oil, um, just because it is made out of silicone, won't actually damage the plastic. So... You know, for six or seven bucks, whatever this bottle actually cost, um, I found mine on Amazon. You know, it should be, uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty cheap way to guarantee nothing's going to happen to it. So the next squeak I had was right here in the foot. And this one's real easy. Um, I'm not even going to take it apart. If you take this screw and this screw out, and then there is one tiny little screw back here. You have to take all three of them out and the two halves of the feet will separate. Once you've got that separated, um, you'll see that there's two screws, one here and one below on this piece. Take those two out and, you know, once again, lubricate the area that uh, has a peg going into it and uh, you'll eliminate that squeak in no time. 
so the last thing I really wanted to point out in this fix video for now, um, <clears throat> and I plan on trying to figure out how to make these hinges work better, but right now I've got a little bit of a problem with my swoop. Specifically, as I tried to transform it, that ended up breaking right off, and I know you probably thought it just broke, but no. This is so jammed in here, ah, oh, it's like going to basically rip my fingernail off trying to uh, get it out of there. I pretty much need a screwdriver to even make the attempt to unplug that. And you can see, actually on the piece, that that chrome has actually flaked away. So it's not the top tab or the middle tab that actually binds this thing and risks this thing cracking, it's the bottom one. So much so that I've heard uh, from a friend who was plugging his in, he pushed here and started cracking on his. So what you really need to do, <clears throat> and I don't even know if you need to, uh, I'm not sure. I haven't done this yet because I'm waiting to see if I can get this piece replaced or the leg or if I'm going to have to replace all of my sore. Because um, basically first time I tried to do anything proper, it just snapped right out of there. So that wasn't good. But anyway, um, take a like a hobby, um, a hobby file and file the top surface because it's the top surface of this. Um, it's going to be hard to see, but if you can kind of get in there, it's the top surface that actually catches on the top of the leg. So you either file this one or file this hole up here a little bit. Um, or, and I don't really think that it's a very important piece, I might end up, if this still causes resistance, I might end up with either this one or the replacement, whatever ends up happening, flat out filing this, uh, this tab off, because it's not really important in the grand scheme of things, and it's just very, very scary. I don't want to push the leg past this, um, because I'm afraid something's going to break on this one too, and... In the event I only get a replacement piece, I don't want to risk breaking this one um, and because it gets jammed in there the same way that this one did. So that's what I have for fixes for now. Uh, like I said, there is things you can do to make this, this uh, joint mechanism here a bit more loose. Uh, the one time I transformed it, I didn't have too big of a problem once I found good places to grip. But uh, when I figure out what is happening with the swoop leg here, I will certainly let you guys know, and uh, you know, if we have a fixed video for that, I'll be sure to post it. So this is T2RX6, I hope this helps you if you guys picked up sore, and I'll see you next week.